Hey gang, I know this isn't my regular Mustang video or Camaro video, but as you, as many of you probably know, I do repairs on other cars as well. And so I have a friend of mine, she needed some uh, brake pads and rotors replaced on her 2010 Mini Cooper. So I'm taking care of that for her today. And in that process, I'll show you that I'm using Wagner TQ front brake pads and Raybestos rotors and I'm sure any of you that have done you know repair work or replaced these parts you'll know that the rotors come packed in a plastic and they usually have an oil coating on them so the first step in installing these is to clean them up so I use some brake parts cleaner and a paper towel and I'll degrease or de-oil those rotors um, beyond that this car has a jack point identified by this plastic piece that hangs down below the rocker so I jacked it up there and I also have a uh, jack stand underneath the cradle for the engine so to do this it's not that complicated there's going to be um, two bolts up here that hold the caliper on and those are 13 millimeter now when I break these loose you'll notice there's a secondary uh, bolt looking head right here and that is a 15 millimeter and the way this works is this binds against this because uh, if you just broke this loose this assembly may rotate so you have to hold this one steady and break that one loose and I'll show you that in a minute the next step of that beyond removing the caliper is I need to be careful also with removing the um, sensor and so I'll get to that when I when I get into the uh, the pads themselves. And you'll note this little dust cover right here also is a retainer for the sensor. So be careful with that. Once I get the caliper off, I will set it up above here and then I'll remove the bracket. Now the bracket has two bolts. There's one here and one directly below it. And these are 16 millimeter or the equivalent in US or standard is 5 8 so you'll see that it fits very well with the 5 8 just like it would with the 16 pretty much the same thing so I'll remove those get the bracket out of the way and then I will remove this retaining bolt which requires in this case a T50 torque style uh, I don't know what you call that socket I guess so I'll remove that and that'll give me access to or allow me to remove the rotor I'll also point out that to remove the um, wheels it required a 17 millimeter socket so let me get set up and start removing these parts before I remove the caliper I want to point out some things the uh, sensor is pressed into the inboard brake pad and you'll see that it follows up like I said it's got this little bleeder uh, cap locks it in there there's another rubber clip here that wraps around and that just comes apart and then these two just push on now I'm just going to separate these because my plan is I want to pull that sensor off with the brake caliper so that I'm not fighting this this wire and I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a minute but to get to the other end of this you take out these there's one here you can take out these if you want there's a couple little um, retainers and it's just a Phillips head screw you unscrew those and then pull those out and that'll give you access underneath here now I don't know if I can show it to you directly or not but that's the clip right there and basically I can just get behind that with my fingers and uh, pull it out of the clip pull it out of the retainer and then I have to separate that and you can see it's got this little clip right here a little push tab and I'll push that in it's hard to do with one hand but basically that'll separate this clip so I'll have to grab onto it with both hands to get that apart so let me get that apart and I'll show you that and there now you can see the other end of that clip 
and of course the end it goes to the sensor. So you, it only fits one way. So now I'll get the caliper off. So there you can see I have the 15 millimeter wrench and then I'll put the 13 millimeter behind it and I'll squeeze and break these loose. Then I'll remove 13 millimeter. You can see it's got some Loctite on it. And remove the lower one. And that'll separate, or that'll allow me to remove, I should say, the caliper. There it comes. Now you can see that pad. I can pull the sensor through or get it part way through. There you go. The caliper. And now I can set the caliper up on top and out of the way. Now the pad just slides right out. So now I'm going to be careful and remove that sensor. And I should be able to just take a screwdriver and gently rotate behind it like this. I'm not pushing really hard, I'm just giving some leverage. And it slid right out. So we're going to put that in the new pad whenever it goes to be installed. So I'm going to set that aside and then remove the outer pad. And really it's just a matter of hooking your fingers behind it, pulling it out. So yeah, these were due, definitely thin. So what I like to do when I take off pads, I already know this is on the inboard side. So I'm going to set that to the inboard side of the car, as I would say, and this one to the outside. So basically like that, so that I know for sure where that one came from and where that one came from. Now I'm going to remove the uh, bracket, and as I said before, should be a 5 8 and since I don't like to abuse my hands get a good angle there I like to use a mallet to break the bolts loose now you could put a socket on there or with a breaker bar something along those lines but this this works well for me So now I'll remove those bolts and get the bracket out of the way. So I remove the bottom bolt. And there's the top bolt, and those are the same length. Now I'll set the bracket aside. And then I have my 3 8 impact that I will use the T50 Torx bit. And remove that bolt. As you can see the rotor just comes off with it and that's got a lot of wear on it. You can see the grooves in it I think. So at this point I'll look over anything else here and then reverse the process. Alright everything looks good and as I stated earlier I'm going to wipe down the surface or I actually have wiped down the surface with the brake parts cleaner and now I'll line the hole in the rotor here with the hole in the axle hub, flange, whatever you want to call it. And I notice this bolt showing a little bit of a wear, almost like the bolt has an oblong uh, shape to it or maybe a compressed kind of shape. But I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on it anyway just to be safe. But I'll put that on. Yeah, I can feel it binding a little bit and hold it in place. And that'll take care of the rotor. Now the caliper, I'm sorry, the caliper bracket 
I'll do the same thing. I'll put it in place and I don't really see much evidence of Loctite but I'm going to put a little bit on there anyway. It's not going to hurt it and keep it from coming apart which there's no reason why it should. Now I'll make sure those are tight. I can't tell you the exact torque specs but I'm going to put a good bit of torque on them and probably tighten them down with a mallet just because. But uh, I couldn't tell you the exact specs. I'm sure if you want to find them you can look them up. But I'm comfortable with making them tight with the mallet. I can tell you they're not going anywhere. Alright, I want to show you how to take care of this caliper in the next segment. All right, to compress the piston back into the caliper, I'm just going to use this simple tool. And they sell these at any parts store, and there's a variety of different designs. I just happen to like this one. It's got a trademark logo of AC Delco, but I think it's just a generic um, marker. And then I'm going to take one of the old pads, set it up against the piston, put the uh, compression tool in there, and rotate it and make it tight against the old pad and gently rotate that and let it work its way back in. I'm not in a hurry, just, just taking my time. Now as I do this, I'm also monitoring the brake fluid level up here in the reservoir. See it's got this little cover. And so I want to keep an eye on that to make sure it doesn't come up above you know the normal markings. And uh, I can see that it's, right now it's below like the halfway point so there is some room to go but just want to point that out because if you if somebody has over serviced this and put in brake fluid whenever the pads were at a low point anyway when you compress that piston in it'll push all this fluid up and you could have fluid coming out of this cap and all over the place so just keep an eye on that and now I'll just continue to slowly compress that piston And you'll feel it kind of get kind of tight. And you don't want to overdo it, but that's where it bottoms out. And remove that. Then I like to check the condition of the, the rubber boot right here and make sure that there's no debris built up and that it's freely moving around. So it is. And now I'm going to get set up and do or show you uh, installation of the pads. I just want to make a note um, before I moved on too much. Whenever I'm compressing the, the caliper and the fluid is rising, if there's too much fluid in there, it'll have to be removed. And so you can get one of these little syringes from a drugstore. Um, they come with different tips, so for different applications. Or you can use something like a turkey baster, which I've used in the past. But uh, these work pretty well, and you can remove fluid. Also, once you get the um, driver's side done or whichever side you want to do first go ahead and compress the uh, brake pedal several times so that the fluid will backfill into the piston and that will lower the level in the uh, reservoir a little bit as well so just a note and hope that's helpful all right so we're going to start with the outboard pad let me angle that just a little bit and basically you're just going to slip it in and push it tight up against the rotor. Now the inboard pad, remember it has that sensor on it, and that sensor has that little bit of a lump on the front side that's going to go towards the rotor. So we're just going to push that into the new pad and do the same thing. Line it up with the track, pop it in. Now at this point I have to get the sensor back through the caliper. So I'll snake it through. Just takes a little bit of effort there. 
and then set the caliper back onto the bracket. And you can see that everything lines up real nice. Now, I know some people will talk about putting, uh, taking apart these little um, the guides for the bolts for the caliper. And I've already checked these. These move very freely. There's no grit, no grime in either one, the top or the bottom. And so, like I said, some people want to take these out and re-grease them, and you can. There's no problem with that. I know that these have a very good boot on them, and the boot is, appears to be sealed very well. So I, I have no problem leaving these alone. So I'll get that in place. And then I'm going to put a little more Loctite on those uh, bolts that hold the caliper bracket. I'm sorry, hold the caliper to the bracket. And again, I can't tell you the exact torque specs on these. I've been doing this quite some time. If you want to look them up, you can. I'm just comfortable making sure they're tight by hand. So let me get those bolts tight, and then I'll reroute that uh, wiring for the sensor. All right, so we already know that the uh, cover for the bleeder retains the uh, sensor as well. And basically, here's another little thing over here I'd taken out of the way. This little rubber uh, bushing, this gave me a little more room on the hose. Let me pop that back in. There we go. And then the rest of this, this basically goes back the way it came. Can't really go more than one way. that there's a little clip up here and then make sure that you have the alignment right with the uh, connector pop that in and then as I said before there's a little clip up there and that's it put your panel back in place put your little clips back in and that should take care of it not too hard. Um, I think if you have a basic understanding of tools and have some tools, you can probably do this job in maybe an hour. So anyway, hope that was informative and thanks for watching. Here's another note. As I'm doing the passenger side, I've realized there is no sensor on this side. So apparently it only has a sensor on the driver's side. Just thought that was interesting and thought I would share that with you.